Welcome to Everyday Buddhism, making every day better by applying the proven tools found in Buddhist concepts. Welcome to episode 92 of Everyday Buddhism, making every day better. This is going to be a mini episode for Independence Day, the 4th of July. In honor of Independence Day a few years ago, my friend Julie posted this question on her Facebook page. What do you consider the definitive moment or event of independence in your own life? Hmm? I thought about that. It's something to think about, actually, on this day and how it applies to you and your feeling of independence or your lack of independence or a sense of agency or free will or, or a question about whether we have free will or agency. But I thought about it and commented, quote, when I completely accepted my interdependence, unquote. Now, I wasn't being coy or purposely trying to answer with a Zen-like paradox. The comment popped out of me as I was thinking about an experience I had in the first year of my Bright Dawn training. It's an experience I refer to as my Buddhist born again moment. The experience was initiated by a story Reverend Al Bloom, the late Reverend Al Bloom. He's a uh, renowned uh, Shin Buddhist teacher. Uh, He shared this with our class as a guest teacher. He he shared a story about a woodpecker felling a gigantic tree just after a few pecks. Feeling powerful, he thought, Wow, I did that? I did that! What he didn't know was that there was a tree crew sawing down the very tree he was pecking at. Now, Bloom Sensei used this story to illustrate the difference between the Shin Buddhist terms self power, jiriki, and other power, tariki. Hearing the story helped me finally grasp what I had always, had always been a greased pig for me. Just when I thought I understood self power and other power, I realized I didn't understand it at all. And the understanding I had the evening of the class was a rational, self-power type understanding. Very conceptual, very logical. Then a few days later, while meditating, I was overcome, overcome with a feeling of relief and complete trust, as if I had finally arrived somewhere. I was thinking about that woodpecker, and I realized I was that woodpecker and had been completely unaware of the fact that there has always been a crew helping me. Now, I described the feeling I had at that moment as utter relief, so much so that I began to cry, almost as if I had just realized that someone or something saved my life. That cry was my personal declaration of interdependence, and it was the most freeing experience in my adult life. Now, I have since come to realize the experience with even a wider perspective, you know, with the gift of time and hindsight. And I realized that for many years prior, I had been deeply embroiled in Vajrayana and Tibetan Buddhist study and practice. I had taken up that path in the typical achievement-oriented way I had done everything in my life. I was convinced that I could... If I could just perfect myself, then I could become a Buddha. If I just had enough commitment and practiced harder and harder and harder. The teachers I studied and took teachings with, you know, seemed to indicate that this was the case. Now, they didn't say that, but it was a sense of, yes, this is what I need to do. I I need to work harder on this, this path. And since there was not much in my life I hadn't been successful at when I really tried, then I thought, I was capable of this too. But I became disillusioned and depressed when I didn't see results. I was still the same person I had always been after years of practice. I resigned myself to the fact that I was a Vajrayani 
Rajayana flunky, and maybe even a Buddhist flunky. About the same time, um, the Bright Dawn Institute training started, and they were they were looking to see if anybody wanted to uh, apply for their second class, and so I applied. I applied because I wanted to see if there was another way, and there was. I finally learned what the Buddha taught. Now I see that one of, if not the most important foundation is, foundations of Buddhist practice is becoming aware of your inherent ignorance and the limitations of your self. It is surprisingly freeing to realize that we are not really the masters of our destiny because the choices we make about the thoughts we will think and the actions we will take are a product of a complex web of experiences, surroundings, and relationships of which everyone else is a part. This is a declaration of interdependence. This declaration is stating that you understand and actively accept your own ignorance. Now, you're not embarrassed or ashamed by it. It's just the nature of being. It is a deep and personal understanding, though, of the second noble truth about the origin of suffering and about the first of the eightfold path, right view. It is a seeming paradox that accepting our ignorance can provide our ultimate freedom. In Shin Buddhist history, this was the freedom that Shinran discovered. This freedom is not won by ourselves through our own actions to become a Buddha, but through an active acceptance that we aren't capable of doing everything or much of anything by ourselves alone. And that through trust in the Dharma, in the teachers that gave us the teachings, and in a broader trust in life and its web, we are always supported and given more than we are capable of giving back. In that humble yet active acceptance that my late teacher, Reverend Koyo Kabosi, points to as acceptance is transcendence. In that active acceptance, we are declaring our interdependence. Recognizing that we can't do it by ourselves, we stop struggling. It's like rolling over on your back and floating rather than continuing to tread water when you become tired of swimming. The ability to float, this buoyancy, is a gift from life itself. Not something you created in yourself. You can't will yourself to float. You float. It is a gift from those before you that taught you that you could float, taught you that you could trust your own ability or or your body's ability to float. Despite all our failures, we are taken care of. If we look at this interdependence with gratitude and humility, we automatically loosen our grip on self-grasping. We let the little self drop away and let all that we think we know become open to interpretation. No one to protect and nothing to defend. A freedom I've given the code name, the complete okayness of everything. Happy Interdependence Day. I'll make the end announcements short and sweet thanks to this being a mini episode. Um, And so just a thank you. Thank you for all of you who contribute to this podcast, membership community, Sangha. Every listen, every review, every email, every donation makes this podcast possible. So please consider a one-time or continuing donation through Patreon or on my website's donate tab, and you can even buy me a coffee on the coffee cup link on the website. You can find all the links in the show notes. So that's all for the announcements. Enjoy the holiday. And until next time, keep finding ways to make yours and everyone's days better.